I'm Dave Norris. I'm a professor of biblical theology at Urshan Graduate School of Theology. When I was in my 20s, my wife and I started a church in Wisconsin, and the Lord blessed, and we're very thankful for that. But I remember the afternoon when uh, I was driving a bus down a country road when the Lord specifically spoke to me about reaching the world and, and saying, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and teach in a Bible college. Of course, he speaks in language that we understand, and I attempted to be obedient to the Lord's uh, calling in my life. Since that time, I was 30 years old, uh, I have taught at a number of different Bible colleges. And then, when Urshan Graduate School of Theology was a dream and finally became a reality, I am so privileged to be one of the uh, original faculty members, which just makes me old. I've been teaching here for about um, 21 years, and I have enjoyed every bit of it. I wanted to share some research I've been doing. We just had our uh, symposium in February, and uh, different ones were sharing topics about uh, how to do church in this way, and. Uh, what are we going to do with the whole transgender question? What are we going to do with all of the, the moral dilemmas that are facing us? And it was really insightful. Uh, and I was able to uh, share some research that I have been doing in the biblical track. When I was a teenager, I had an acquaintance. Uh, he said to me, look at, look at Revelation 3.12. And he turned me there, and of course, I'm not that familiar with a specific verse. And it, it says, he who overcomes, uh, I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my God. This is Jesus speaking. And I'll write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, New Jerusalem coming down from heaven from my God, and I'll write on him my new name. And he said, now the, the name, the new name that God wrote on him was Baha'u'llah. Well, there's the newest incarnation of Jesus. And I didn't have an answer. Uh, I knew it wasn't that, obviously. But I wanted to study this out in a way that could withstand the academic rigors and be presented at any academic symposium. So I, I worked on it for a while. Uh, let me give you a little background. When I was doing my doctoral dissertation, I wrote uh, my dissertation, essentially the name of it was No Other Name, and it was on baptism in Jesus' name and all the things about names in the Old Testament and the ancient Near East. And I discovered that names are very, very powerful. Uh, names are not simply, hi, my name's Dave. Um, in the Old Testament, the covenant name of uh, God was Yahweh. And uh, he had other descriptors that described his power and greatness. In the New Testament, of course, um, when Yahweh became incarnate um, in uh, Matthew 121, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Well, the word Jesus, Yeshua, literally means Yahweh has become our salvation. So there's not a different Yahweh in the Old Testament and a Yahweh in the New Testament. It's that Yahweh has become incarnate. But there are other names associated with Jesus, prophesied even, you should be called Wonderful Counselor of the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Well, Emmanuel is not what they called him when he walked on the street, but Emmanuel is who he was. Call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. For the first time in human history, the name Yeshua, which is like our name Joshua, is equivalent to who Jesus Christ actually is. Yahweh has become our salvation. So when you take the book of Revelation and you begin to study it and the different names there, there's some amazing things in the book of Revelation. Um, people, scholars for most of the 20th century had sort of discarded it and said it's not a bad editing, it's this and that. But in the 1990s, there was a man by the name of Richard Baucom who uh, turned scholarship on his head. He said, look, here's a pattern. Look, here's a pattern. Here's a pattern. Here's a pattern. And if you read Revelation in its own integrity, uh, you will find out exactly what the book means. So when you think of names in the book of uh, Revelation, um, you've got uh, the name of God that's used. You've got the name of Jesus that's used. You've got some circumlocutions like he who sits on the throne and that sort of thing. Well, the interesting thing about it is, and see if I can find this, 
The name of God um, is used 14 times. The name Lord God Almighty is used uh, seven times. The name Jesus is used 14 times, but the name that's used more of any other is that of the Lamb. It's used um, 28 times, seven times four. Well, seven is the number of God and so on. So there's something really going on here. So let's talk about names and the name of the Lamb and how the name of the Lamb gets incorporated into this mystery. Um, in the book of Revelation, you have one who sits on the throne, but then you also have the Lamb in uh, Revelation chapter five and verse six. Um, like, how does that work? Uh, and in Revelation, the end of chapter seven, the lamb again is in the midst of the throne. Oh, what does that mean? Does that mean that the lamb is other than God? Well, here's the thing. The lamb is not just a circumlocution or another name for Jesus, but it's a story of redemption. It's a story uh, that is so powerful that the book of Revelation lauds and celebrates it. As you track through the book of Revelation, this is what you find, that the distance between linguistically, between the one who sits on the throne and the lamb shrink altogether so that by the time you're done, you look on the throne and what do you see? Um, Revelation chapter 22, verse uh, three. Um, they, they, uh, no, there should be no more curse. For the, there shall be no more curse um, for the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it. They shall see his face and his name shall be on uh, uh, their foreheads. His face, his forehead. There's a blending uh, in the end. Also, uh, when you look um, in the book of Revelation, um, uh, the, when it speaks of God, it says, I am he who lives and was dead and alive forever. More than Jesus speaking. Um, when it, but when it speaks of God, it calls him the beginning and the end. When it speaks of the lamb, it calls him the first and the last. But in Revelation chapter 22, 13, Jesus speaking says, um, he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And it comes together in the book of Revelation. So the new name is not George or Baha'u'llah. Then the new name of God is an experiential expression of the fullness of all that we have in Jesus Christ. And we'll see the man on the throne, the lamb, and we'll say, your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. I want to invite you to our next symposium. You say, well, when is it and how can I come? Registration is very, very simple. You can just go online and register. Um, and you can see and hear all the various scholars. Doesn't matter what you're interested in. There's just so many papers on so many subjects you can pick and choose. The next symposium is February 16th and 17th, 2023. Please mark it on your calendars, February 16 and 17, 2023. I hope to see you there.